All right, let's get started. Welcome at this uh, Securing uh, Mobility webinar, uh, a joint webinar together with uh, our value partner, Lookout. Uh, so uh, welcome, Jeroen. Hello. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So uh, my name is Peter Dahlmans. I'm a principal consultant and enterprise mobility MVP at CT Global. And uh, in my daily job, I help customers uh, onboarding uh, Microsoft Intune uh, and the EMS uh, uh, suite with uh, focus on uh, on security, of course. And Jeroen, if you want to introduce yourself yeah, quickly. Yeah, of course. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, great that you joined our uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Jeroen Weidog. I'm a sales engineer for Lookout since 2015, uh, and I'm focusing on, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, demonstrating our products, uh, doing webinars, but also working together with our uh, key alliance partners uh, like uh, like Microsoft and, and our partner CT Global. All right. So yeah, just to give you some background, maybe uh, you've not heard about Lookout, uh, what the company is and what we have done so far. Um, basically, Lookout was founded in 2007. Uh, it was a company that started uh, with the uh, invention of, of securing mobility, because at the time our founders were yeah, found a vulnerability in the Nokia 3310, uh, and they went to Nokia with that uh, to fix it uh, because they were able to extract the uh, yeah, context from the address book remotely via Bluetooth. Um, at the time, uh, there was not much interest in fixing that, uh, but yeah, by working together with, uh, with Nokia and, and the others, uh, it became clear that it was necessary to provide actually additional security on mobility and in 2007 it was also the release of the iPhone. So the, the smartphone uh, was, was invented and more capabilities were there. So we launched the product uh, to secure mobile devices and we've done that mainly via carriers. So today Lookout is a company that secures mobile devices globally uh, around 163 million. Um, and in 2015, we basically shifted our, uh, uh, yeah, our, our focus also to securing the enterprises because we saw that a lot of functionality was basically uh, being adopted by the enterprises. So actually, there was a, a shift uh, towards a consumer functionality on smart devices that also is now being adopted by enterprises. And uh, that does uh, bring in an additional challenge for the organization to uh, actually secure the mobile devices. So we launched that product in 2015. Uh, we now have offices uh, and our headquarters is based in San Francisco. But as you can see, we have them around the globe. Uh, currently, we have roughly around 350 employees. And as you can see, since we are quite long in the uh, in this space, uh, we are also working and, and we have a lot of patents in, in securing mobility because, yeah, it, it all comes down that you also have to think about those kind of things. So, indeed, and why would we want to uh, protect our mobile devices, you think? Uh, well, it's... Uh, it's mainly because of yeah, the Windows environment is is getting secure and secure, and uh, there was a long time focus of the uh, of the hackers and the criminals to to get uh, data out of of Windows, and then the mobile of the mobile world came, and um, on mobile devices there's also data, and uh, uh, criminals see. A lot of potential in getting money from uh, from uh, end users and companies uh, by hijacking uh, mobile phones or uh, uh, getting data off uh, the mobile phones. So here are a couple of examples of uh, WhatsApp. I think we all have seen those messages popping up: uh, free, uh, get fast, get in fast. Legoland is giving away five passes. This can be. WhatsApp, but this can also be Facebook or whatever. And uh, when you click the link, then uh, you uh, download an application you need to sideload or install, and then you're uh, breaching your phone and giving away a lot of data. Um, 
with Lookout for Work, you're able to detect uh, malicious links. And um, uh, so this adds uh, value to, to your users to uh, add the safe browsing uh, functionality. Um, a good thing to know is that if you go to the URL uh, listed uh, on the left, then uh, if you do uh, click in of type in the URL in a in a normal computer, then it will also be uh, will be uh, redirected to Legoland.com, so to the original website. Uh, when you do this on a mobile phone then uh, you will be uh, landing on a malicious page. So uh, th the criminals are smart enough to only pinpoint this for mobile devices because mobile devices are small. Uh, people are uh, often not used to look at those pages on, uh, on mobile devices, so they quickly accept and uh, add their uh, data with all risks attached. And uh, that also gives uh, another great example, uh, because uh, two years ago, Lookout uh, found uh, three vulnerabilities in the iOS uh, release 9.3.4. Um, because a human rights activist was actually being attacked via sending a text message, and that's what you see on the left-hand uh, bottom message. It was actually... Uh, targeted for this human rights activist that he needed to download or, uh, yeah, they wanted to show him pictures about uh, things that were happening in, 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 in the prisons in, in, in the Middle East. So it was for him attractive to click on it, but basically what happened, uh, and because he was already attacked a few times, he reached out to us to see, hey, what is this actually? What is happening right now? So look, I investigated that. Uh, together with Citizen Labs, uh, we found out that uh, this was actually a state-sponsored attack by, by a uh, organization, uh, or actually, yeah, a, a government uh, to get uh, data from uh, this mobile device. Because what basically happened is they took over the operating system by just clicking on a link and uh, getting uh, all the information and installing malware, and the end user does not have any visibility into that. And of course, this is a state-sponsored attack. So, okay, what are the chances that maybe a, a, a normal employee, but think about your executives. Uh, if it is sensitive information, uh, this, this malware or this, this hack was basically extracting all the uh, information, uh, but it could also be that, uh, yeah, a limited amount of information is, is extracted from the device. So and then you have the uh, the, the phishing uh, uh, campaigns from from I don't know who who does it. Uh, can also be state sponsored, but uh, we have some a uh, couple of examples for Office 365. I also get often emails to reset my password uh, because uh, my uh, Office 365 account has been expired or something like that. And if you look closely to the email, then you see that it's, it's not coming from Office 365 or not coming from Microsoft. It looks like uh, the look and feel is, is good, but um, yeah, those links are uh, often uh, redirected to other pages where you, where you uh, uh, don't need to enter your uh, details. Um, but also uh, Alitalia, uh, an Italian uh, um, uh, flight operator uh, giving away free tickets. And uh, yesterday we had an example of uh, Vodafone Netherlands where uh, users got a uh, text message that their uh, 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 code was expired, so they needed to re uh, uh, yeah, re-enter their uh, credentials to get access again. So it's it's pretty uh, pretty well thought attacks and um, campaigns to get data out of your users. Yeah, and also good to mention, Peter, is that uh, what you see is that these campaigns are now actually being targeted to mobiles because. Uh, 
on one hand, uh, everyone thinks that you will receive a phishing email, but in reality, on a mobile device, there are so many messaging applications where you can receive messages in. So it's even more, yeah, more challenging <laughs> because usually a desktop of the company is very locked down. But uh, yeah, a typical uh, device from the end user is uh, is yeah quite open. <laughs> because they usually have access to anything and they can browse uh, and they can yeah, get messages from, from various ap uh, applications. And another example here is what you see uh, on the slide is that it's, it's not always about uh, uh, malware. Uh, we already talked about uh, uh, hacking, so routing, but also phishing. Uh, this is an example about uh, that applications are not violating any regulations from uh, the Apple App Store. They are basically asking permissions to track your location data. But as a company, that could also be very sensitive. And that's what you see here. It's an example of Strava and Polar uh, in the Netherlands, but also globally that uh, a uh, researcher investigated, hey, let me look into some uh, some camps and, and, and look at the heat maps. Uh, so the, the, the armed forces uh, bases to check what, 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 where everyone is walking. And by, by accident, all those heat maps were exposed uh, to the public. So for yeah, some person who wants to do something bad, he has a lot of insight in that. And this is another challenge that we see is that there are a lot of legal applications, but they are violating corporate policies. So yeah, uh, blocking uh, applications on a mobile device, that's probably uh, the, the first thing that people will think about uh, doing. But what we see is that once you block a lot of things and you lock down a mobile device, they will buy another phone and uh, simply do that on the other phone. So it's, it's a challenge, uh, I would say. Yeah, and I think in the Netherlands, the, the military is not allowed to use uh, apps like Strava anymore, where they... Uh track their where their bicycle uh, tracks are and stuff like that uh, for for this reason so we as a company uh, lookout uh, yeah since my journey in lookout in 2015 uh, we, we have developed many new features in our product initially we were the company that was just having a, a kind of an antivirus solution uh, for mobile uh, but but we have basically also yeah the responsibility to help uh, companies understand what kind of ways you can get into a mobile device. So what you see here is that we created the mobile risk matrix. This is just an independent view of of what kind of risks, and that's what you see on the left hand side uh, that there are risks invoked on using a mobile device. So you have threats, you have software vulnerabilities because software is developed by humans. But also the, the behaviors. Some some someone can uh, badly uh, use the, the the mobile device or just maybe uh, configuring it wrong. And then you see um, uh, that uh, also with the attack factors. So on a mobile device, you have the same attack factors, of course, as on on a on a on a on a desktop because you have uh, applications, the device network, and by the content. But here you get a full visibility on all the things that uh, could happen uh, on a mobile device and where you should have coverage for in a product. Uh, so like the phishing is, is particularly on the right hand side uh, covered that you need to have that. Uh, but it could also be that someone is clicking on a public Wi-Fi network and that someone is trying to intercept his credentials. Uh, a device based attack. So someone is clicking on a link and is downloading an exploit and, and, and that is basically taking over the device or uh, installing a malicious application as you can see on the left-hand side, or maybe apps that are removed from the App Store or have vulnerable SDKs in there, uh, but also the apps that leak data, as I uh, already explained, uh, that they are not violating the Apple App Store regulations uh, or the, the Google Play Store uh, regulations, but they are uh, leaking sensitive da uh, data that could harm a organization. So an example on how uh, yeah, criminals try to, to persuade us to enter our, uh, in this case, Dropbox uh, uh, account. And uh, yeah, which one is fake? Uh, if you look at the mobile device, uh, it's, it's smaller. And 
for for us, it would be easy to see, okay, this is a fake one. But for your end users, uh, when they maybe log in once in a while in Dropbox, they won't see the differences. And there are a couple. Uh, so you always need to look at the URL, uh, maybe look at the, the login um, uh, button uh, when you sign in with Google there's often a logo uh, presented um, but the difference are the differences aren't that big um, and like I said it's not easy for end user to identify those differences and another example here as well Google pages how frequently are pages actually changing uh, because of the form factor, yes, uh, and, and you try to sometimes uh, educate users to watch the URL. Uh, but on a desktop, you can just yeah hover your mouse over the, the URL to check which kind of uh, URL it's actually visiting. But how many websites are impersonating the uh, URL and incorporating a long company name with dashes in between and those kind of things? It is it's simply very hard for the end user. And, and really a challenge. Yeah, and if we look at Office 365, then uh, yeah, another example. Uh, we used to log in with uh, Office 365, but nowadays it's all Microsoft, uh, using the Microsoft uh, uh, credentials and the Microsoft branding. But uh, for a user, it's, it's really hard, really hard. So, and yeah. What can happen? It also, you know, what can happen? And, and this is a great example, I think. Uh, it's not only that you, uh, and what you now see happen in the background is that someone is clicking on a link and actually the, the phone is crashing. And uh, yeah, this, this can happen, of course, to any platform. It's not that we're trying to uh, uh, make a, a vendor look bad, but what we want to say is that, yes, it's not about not all about malware on a mobile device or uh, unsecure Wi-Fi networks. No, it's also about that you want to have kind of visibility and that you want to have control because this was simply a link uh, that someone clicked on. So what if you at least had something in control that you could maybe block or prevent uh, on that mobile device or notify the end user, hey, this is a malicious link. Uh, that could have prevented this. So, if this is happening with a phone and this is only that the phone is crashing, but it could also be that maybe the, the phone <laughs> fully wiped or, or removed all the data. Uh, you don't want that to happen to maybe 10 or 20,000 employees that you have running around globally because yeah, that, that would be devastating. Uh, yeah, and indeed, it's good to point out that uh, in this deck we use a lot of iOS examples, but for Android there are maybe much more uh, examples we should, could also be uh, showing, uh, uh, like the really uh, uh, locking the device. Uh, we have we have had seen the issues that uh, uh, people were taking over the device uh, by resetting the passcode and. Uh, um, yeah, without paying uh, bitcoins, they couldn't get access to their device anymore. Um, but yeah, often iOS is considered the most secure platform. Uh, not always. Yeah, and it's it's not everyone is using an iOS device, so it's a mix, and that's uh, yeah, that, that's the freedom that end users want to have, and and that is also good. Uh, look at how there's many, many customers running around uh, with the, a mobile device. And, and just to give you a better sense on what is the need, and, and we did provide a lot of samples on just to uh, illustrate how easy it is and how easy users can, uh, can, be, uh, can be tricked uh, to install malicious applications or click on malicious links. But uh, among the customers, what we have done is just a survey among all the customers to, to check what, what is the actual threat and counter rate on, on mobile devices. And what you see on application level is that we see a lot of attacks and, and it's much easier that someone is being requested to install an application. Um, many organizations say, no, our users don't do that, but take the example of Pokemon Go when it was not released, uh, still a lot of employees were playing that and they were playing that on mobile phones that were also accessing corporate data. Um, 
soon it became clear that a lot of uh, Pokemon Go applications were also released to download for free uh, outside the uh, Google Play Store uh, that you could, yeah, that they were infected or uh, uh, there were a lot of other examples uh, as well with uh, with Fortnite uh, because Fortnite is is a very popular game among amongst children, uh, but also adults. In that uh, they are not distributing it via the official Play Stores just because yeah, uh, Google is requesting uh, an additional fee for that to for the, the distribution, and they don't want to uh, don't want to pay that. So there is only a way to download it uh, from uh, yeah, a Fortnite website, but there are also other places where you could download that. So, uh, and, and hackers are easily incorporating malware into that. Uh, on iOS, I would say it's, it's the same. What we see is that a lot of users are sideloading applications and sideloading basically means that they are circumventing the uh, app vetting process of Apple. So you don't and know I'm, what this application does. Yeah. and. It, 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 it's strange to me because when I used to have my iPhone, my first iPhone, I needed to jailbreak my my uh, iPhone to sideload an app. But apparently, this is much easier nowadays. Um, everybody can sideload apps. Yeah. So, and also what we see on routing and jailbreaking, uh, the percentage, I'm not going to name them, but yeah, we do see some encounter rates on men in the middle, but it's not, I would say, uh, uh, something that we see often uh, because yeah, uh, that is, it is happening uh, that uh, people's credentials are being stolen when they are connecting to a Wi-Fi network, but not that much. Uh, but if you look at, uh, yeah, I think the, the other attack factor, uh, phishing and content, we see a lot of mobile devices are actually encountering uh, a phishing URL. And that's uh, roughly around 10% of what we see on our platform. So looking at what, what you, we've seen the mobile risk matrix uh, and where are, what are the components that a uh, solution that will suit and will, will help in, in this case. So look at has a product that's called mobile threat defense. And that is also what, uh, uh, what, yeah, independent uh, uh, organizations uh, who research uh, these kind of uh, things uh, are, are uh, calling it. It's mobile threat defense. It gives protection against app-based threats, network-based threats, device-based threats, and helps you in uh, creating custom threat policies. But there are also other components. And the other components are uh, the data, like I said, uh, exhibiting behavior that we don't want, like data leakage. Uh, it's called mobile application reputation services, but also patch management and, and mobile vulnerability management, how we call it, and also the phishing and content protection. So Lookout has a comprehensive uh, suite uh, built uh, where all these uh, four uh, circles are, are actually being covered in one pro product. Uh, it's called mobile endpoint security. So if we look uh, at how this works, um, in this figure, we have the mobile device, which is connected uh, to, uh, to our corporate data. Uh, this can be email, this can be SharePoint, this uh, can be uh, yeah, anything uh, in the cloud uh, considered corporate or uh, on-premises. Um, with the Lookout uh, client installed, um, it's always in touch with the uh, security cloud of uh, Lookout. Where, and the security cloud of Lookout is is the the large database of uh, uh, with information about malicious apps, malicious websites, etc., etc. Et um, so, what happens if uh, if a vulnerability, a threat, is detected? Um, the mobile device reaches out to the uh, Lookout cloud. And uh, because of the integration with uh, with uh, Microsoft Intune and Azure AD conditional access, um, a device is directly um, um, uh, marked as not compliant. And uh, we all know that if a uh, device is marked as not compliant, then conditional access can kick in and uh, block uh, access to corporate data. Um, so this is this is a good 
good thing and it, this is done instantly. Um, so if the user removes the app or removes the, 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 the threat, uh, the device is uh, marked healthy again, so the device will be uh, compliant again and the user has uh, access uh, again. So um, the mobile risk API also integrates with uh, uh, incident response systems, uh, SIEM uh, solutions like Splunk, Radar, Arcsight, but also uh, Windows Defender. So, and then with Windows Defender, you have all the information in, uh, in one place. So if we look at um, a quick video with a couple of demos, and um, let's start it. So the first demo is uh, basically what happens if a user uh, hits a link. So the device is, uh, com in compli of, is compliant and a WhatsApp message is, uh, is being received. So the user wants to get the free Legoland uh, tickets and then um, the user is being blocked uh, from accessing this link. And like I said, if you go to this link on a, on a Windows PC, it will redirect uh, uh, to the legoland.com. So it will ignore um, everything. <clears throat> and good to mention as well, uh, Peter, is that what we try to build uh, this protection into the product to uh, preserve the end user privacy. So we're not backhauling all the traffic from the mobile device uh, to the corporate network, and then we have huge uh, yeah, uh, scanning uh, to, to check those URLs. Now we do that locally on the device just to make sure that the end user does not feel being watched uh, specifically. No, exactly. And you have different modes also, operating modes, where you can uh, uh, enable uh, um, a privacy level that uh, almost nothing has been seen uh, centrally. Right. So if we go to the uh, to the Intune portal, uh, Azure AD, uh, we can see that um, this iPhone is uh, being marked as compliant, and on the right side you see the the actual uh, iPhone. Uh, also in the Lookout um, uh, portal. You, you are able to see the same iPhone uh, with uh, all the information which is scattered uh, about the iPhone. And as a granular way of uh, configuring the policies. So for instance, in this case, um, we want to uh, let the user test the functionality. So we uh, allow the, uh, the test virus to do just just alert it, uh, alert the app uh, instead of blocking access. Uh, what we do with um, uh, when side loading a malicious app, and then we can block access towards uh, towards the Office 365 or other services controlled by conditional access. So if we save those policies, we can go to the device and. Uh, yeah, download the test virus and then you will see that uh, you can easily sideload an app without jailbreaking the device and then Lookout will report okay there's an issue found on the device but access to uh, to Outlook uh, to the web access from Outlook is uh, still uh, still allowed because it's in this case, it's a test virus. You, of course, you can also block access if you want to test uh, uh, this uh, scenario uh, while blocking access. So if we go back to the, uh, to the website and download another app, which uh, where we can install the app and we need to uh, accept uh, a management profile to trust it. And then at the same time, uh, Lookout is uh, detecting uh, two issues, uh, uh, another issue, 
And it's basically that uh, we have side loaded an app and trusted uh, a certificate. And now instantly access to um, exchange online will be blocked. So uh, we can also, uh, you see that also uh, uh, access via the Outlook app has been blocked. So all access towards uh, Office 365 is blocked. So if you look in the, uh, in the app of in the company portal, you see that uh, Lookout has found an issue. And if you look in the uh, Intune console, you see that the device is not compliant. And the same counts for uh, for the Lookout console, where you can dive deeper in the uh, in the issue. So on the right side, the device is already uh, uh, being remediated, uh, aka the user has removed uh, uh, the malicious app, and um, the information is directly sent towards the Lookout Cloud, and of course uh, Azure AD, and the device is being marked as compliant. And the user is uh, will have access to their uh, to their corporate resources again. And there we have our email again. So a good thing to mention is that uh, of course um, it's a big part of the remediation is the user responsibility. Um, it's not that uh, we can configure um, uh, automatic removal of apps. Uh, that's totally up to uh, to the users. Yeah, and the, the problem with that is, is that the operating system does not allow you to, uh, to do those kind of things uh, because every application is running in its own sandbox. So you cannot basically remove an application. But what we can do, and, and that is also in, in line with the end user privacy and, and, and freedom, is that we say, okay, on one end, the organization wants visibility. That's what you get with a product like MTD. Uh, but then uh, for the end user, they can still do what they want. And on the other end, the, uh, let's say the security for the organization is still in place. So uh, no data is leaked and uh, no access to corporate uh, uh, data is, is currently uh, possible when a threat is, is active. And if you, it's not only that we are saying that, hey, you, uh, yeah, mobile is actually forgotten uh, because if you ask someone, hey, do you have a kind of antivirus solution on your, uh, uh, on your uh, desktop, then everyone probably raises his hand. But, but how about threats on mobile? Uh, Gardner is the independent institute that looks at it, and they also say that by 2019, the the overall malware uh, that is available, so total uh, of PC and mo uh, mobile, uh, is that uh, one third of the malware uh, in 2019 will be uh, uh, targeted to uh, mobile devices. So it's 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 a becoming a, a problem, and uh, so is an MDM solution. Uh, if, you can click either. Uh, if, you, if you look at an MDM solution uh, like Intune, uh, is that uh, also sufficient or EMIM? Uh, no, it's Gardner is also recommending to put on top of it a mobile threat defense solution. So to get visibility, to get additional protection in place there uh, for uh, the mobile device and uh, make sure that your uh, corporate data is not, uh, not leaked. Yeah, and the visibility helps also with the GDPR uh, we currently have in uh, in Europe, where you need to prove that you have done everything uh, to protect uh, the company uh, from data leakage. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, why is, is, is look at the best partner to work with? Um, Thanks to our tight integration that we have with uh, Microsoft products, uh, Lookout is one of the first that had the Intune uh, integration uh, to get automated remediation so the administrator does not get additional work. Because yeah, uh, if a threat is detected, uh, automatically conditional access kicks in. Uh, we now also support integrations with Windows Defender ATP 
as the only vendor and uh, yeah microsoft has chosen lookout uh, to integrate with that for the mobile devices because yeah the current portfolio of microsoft uh, does not offer any protection uh, on the attack factors mentioned from the mobile risk matrix uh, so uh, they've chosen lookout to to help in in securing mobile devices ios and android so lookout approach the problem as a big data problem and how do we do that is uh, by this big sensor network that we have so we are protecting currently one over 160 million devices globally and we also do that by already scanning a lot of applications in our cloud just to collect data samples and if anything bad happens that we can immediately uh, detect if an application is malicious so we do it cloud first device assistance so it does mean that uh, yes we do it in conjunction with the cloud because we want to offload and minimize minimize uh, resource consumption on the mobile device because if the battery is constantly draining if the cpu is ticking 100 percent there each time uh, then yeah users don't like that uh, so we do that with our massive data set um, and as mentioned we're a company that uh, yeah built basically from the ground up uh, this platform so we're ingesting also a lot of applications each day and uh, yeah just to give you an idea roughly 90,000 applications is uh, what we ingest uh, these days uh, as well um, it is a company uh, well funded uh, to make sure if there is additional production needed or uh, expansion in the product uh, then we, we are able to to support that with uh, with our yeah, current workforce uh, around 350 employees uh, globally And then we come to the uh, Q&A section. Uh, if you have a question, yeah, feel free to type uh, in the question in the uh, in the IM window. I have a question. Um, uh, to your um, experience, uh, Jeroen, um, uh, you work together with uh, with both uh, Apple and uh, and Google. And if you find an if you guys find an Apple of a, a Google app which is being malicious, um, you report that to Google. And how quick is it normally being removed? Yeah, that, that's always with responsible disclosure. Of course, we 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 immediately reach out to Google uh, to to notify them about that. Uh, sometimes it can uh, can take uh, a little bit of time because yeah we also need to deliver the the proof of that but i have no actual numbers on that uh, but the thing i want to highlight is that yes we are helping google to make sure that there are no potentially harmful applications in uh, out there uh, so why do you need look out then then uh, simply it's that because we want uh, to provide visibility to the organization because Apple can or, or uh, Google can just push an update or remove an application from the App Store. But how do you know if that application is actually running already on a device? So we can then push over the air updates, coverage for that, immediate. Your, prote uh, your protection is in place and the organization is protected uh, against the uh, threats. Yeah, and sometimes they don't remove it. Uh, I, when I'm demoing this uh, at customers or during conferences, then I'm always using one app, which is, yeah. I know you guys reported it uh, a long, long time ago, but it's still there. Yeah, um, that does happen. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, indeed. So any other questions? Yeah, I see a question coming in. Uh, what's the license model? Um, so how it currently works is that you can either have a device-based license or you can have a user-based license. It is always, yeah, the calculation that you have to make as an organization, uh, but we we'll usually see uh, among our uh, customers uh, who do use Microsoft products is that we just have the same model, uh, the user-based license. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't see any other questions coming. Uh, if not, then uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you have questions afterwards, feel free to uh, reach out uh, through email and we will uh, take care of, uh, of the answers.
Okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.